I thought I'd start the video today with a few tips and kind of websites and apps that I use to plan my shoots and what I use to maybe decide what location to go to and get an idea of what the conditions and weather are gonna be like before I commit to driving out to the mountains. And I'm using websites that maybe are a little bit different from what you might expect. Um, and they're not like the usual apps, but come on, come take a look. Some of the websites I find myself using more and more regularly now are actually webcam websites. And no matter what location you're going to, you'll probably find if you Google webcams, say in Kananaskis, webcams in Banff, webcams in Jasper, there's gonna be loads of them. And you can see here on webcams around Kananaskis, we've got plenty of views of the road here. We've got views from Nikiska webcams, which is the ski resort. I've got views from Canmore and all sorts of different places along the road and in car parks all throughout Banff and Canmore. So I can look at here and go, all right, cool. There's definitely some snow on the roads at the moment towards the mountains and there's plenty of snow up in the ski resorts. And it did snow here like a few days ago. So I'm really hoping that there's gonna be some fresh snow when I head out there. I can even see here in this Kananaskis car park that there is a nice little bit of yellow foliage still as well in this car park. So maybe we'll get a bit of both as well. Another great one for Banff is the Banff gondola webcam at the top of Sulphur Mountain. So you can see here, I can see there's fresh snow all over the top of the mountains here. There's some on the ground, but maybe it's not so much in the trees. This is also a great webcam if you're looking for aurora or if you think there might be an inversion because the camera is so up high, you can see above the clouds and you can see the sky at nighttime. Great one to follow. And in general, we've got the town of Banff traffic cameras. Again, I can see how much snow is on the road and I can see the foliage through here as well. So if I'm looking for full foliage or if I'm looking for snow on the ground, I can find it all in these webcams. So starting off with one of the apps that I've been using really regularly for the last few years, this app is called Clear Outside. And essentially it's cloud coverage and fog and kind of sky quality. So you can choose a location and then when you go into the app here, you can see I've got a percentage of total cloud coverage and the time at the top. And I've got low cloud, medium cloud and high cloud. And it also gives me kind of fog and rain and wind as well, which is super useful in planning a location. It's a really good way of getting a good idea of what sunrise is gonna be like. Obviously, ideally I would like some high cloud, maybe some medium cloud, but I don't really want 100% cloud coverage. I want kind of 50 or 60% is normally enough to get a pretty good sunrise. So that's a great starting point for me to decide whether it's worth driving out into the mountains or not. Another app I use pretty regularly is actually Photo Pills. Um, it is a paid for app, but it's definitely worthwhile and it's a bit more of an in-depth planner. So if you just press the planner button here, you can see I can choose a location. And as I scan through the bottom here and scan through the time, I'm gonna see where the sun rises, where the sun sets, where the Milky Way core shows. So if you have a composition in mind and you wanna know which direction the sun's gonna be rising or setting or when it's gonna hit your composition, you can go into Photo Pills and plan that really accurately and plan it based on the day and the time. So a really valuable app to use as well. So looking at those webcams and apps, it doesn't look like there's gonna be a lot of cloud in the sky tomorrow morning but it does look like there's gonna be some fresh snow on the ground. So I think it is definitely worth heading out. Even after all that kind of research on the webcams, there's not as much snow as I was hoping here. A lot of it has melted over the last day. I was hoping for kind of snow all on the shoreline and maybe some fresh snow on the trees. However, we do have a pretty stunning reflection of Mount Rundle and Mount Rundle has plenty of fresh snow on it. And as well, we do have a pretty impressive amount of foreground options along the front here now. Because it's coming into winter, the lake is really low and it's opened up a bunch of foreground options right on the front here. So I think I'm still gonna get some shots this morning. Even though we haven't really got too much cloud in the sky, I should get some light. 
So as we wait for that light to come up and hit Mount Rundle, gonna have a bit of an explore around on the uh, shore front here, find some nice foregrounds. There's some really nice frozen ice puddles. And as well, we've got this kind of log here, which is pretty much all on show just down here. That's probably gonna be my first shot for all this morning. Let me show you quickly what is quite a common mistake when shooting kind of foreground interests like this. I suppose the temptation with stuff like this is, you can see on the back of the camera here, is to almost shoot from a bit more head height. And you can kind of see in the middle here, we've got this kind of dead zone of nothing. But if you come a bit lower, you're gonna close up that space and then just have the foreground and the reflection. And as there isn't much in the sky, I don't really need to include much sky today. Another good little compositional tip when shooting subjects like this, when you've got like quite a dominant foreground and also a good background, is you don't always have to shoot as wide as you think. The temptation often is in this kind of situation, and I, I'm very guilty of this as well, is to go really wide and get kind of on top of your foreground subject to make it look bigger and elongate it. But with something like this, when I've got quite a large log in the foreground, I can actually move back a little bit and zoom in and I'm actually shooting this at very close to 30 millimeters, maybe slightly over. And what that does is it actually compresses the background and brings the mountains a little bit closer. So that way I'm not losing those mountains in the wide angle, they're not really small in the background. They're kind of almost equal and balancing really well. So the foreground and the background are taking up a similar amount of space and one isn't necessarily dominating over the other. Let me show you what I mean. So this is that image at 16 millimeters. Even though to be fair, I do quite like the way the log looks so that kind of stretch from the wide angle. You can see Mount Rundle in the background here is now really small. And I think in this situation, our background subject is equally as important as this lovely kind of foreground rock with the ice on it. So this is 16 millimeters, much closer to the foreground. And this is essentially the same location, the same composition, but the tripod moved back a little and then zoomed in to around 30 millimeters. And you can see how much more even Mount Rundle is and the log in the foreground. We're making Mount Rundle look a fair amount larger, which in this situation is what I'm after. So we're going to see if I can grab another composition this morning. And this is one I've tried to shoot before, but it's hard to get the ideal conditions. But today is a good day for this composition because I'm underneath this tree. I've got these beautiful roots right in the foreground here. And then I've also got this tree canopy. So what I can do with that is actually block some of the sky that has nothing really in it today because there's no clouds in the top kind of dirty the frame, add a natural frame to the mountain, and also use these roots as a leading line. Now it's really difficult to get the kind of right angle whilst in here, because this, the roots are all in the way, you wanna get kind of low and have them coming out of frame, but you need to get super low to also get this foliage in at the top. So it is a difficult composition to kind of set up. It's quite easy, you know, you can hold your camera in the right place but then getting the tripod in the right place is pretty hard but I think uh, on a day like today it's probably going to be a perfect little option. Right so I struggled with that tripod for absolutely ages. I haven't really been able to get it exactly where I wanted it. I tried holding it back and kind of doing a focus stack handheld, but I'm not sure if that's gonna work. But I've got a slightly different composition from what I originally had, just slightly different sets of roots in the front, but I've managed to set up the tripod, which means I can focus stack this. So I think it will still work out, but it's such an awkward little spot, but if you get it just right, it can turn out really, really well. But look at my uh, tripod and how I've got that set up right now. So this is not legitimately kind of folded out. This leg 
just completely vertically like wedged into the roots here and then these legs both in different kind of angles and also what I've done here is you can see you might be able to see here is that the plate of the tripod is actually further down so I wanted to get a little bit lower so that here the trees clear the top of Mount Rundle so I had to get the camera just a little bit lower so I've actually kind of only half secured it in the base plate here I've slid it a fair amount down but hopefully that'll work yeah you might be able to see from here you can see the trees just clear the top of Mount Rundle there so that's why I've got that kind of set up so weirdly here and the camera's barely attached because that route here is so close to the camera I've had to shoot about six or seven focus stacks just of the foreground and then a different exposure for Mount Rundle and for the sun hopefully I've taken enough focus stacks so that's sharp front to back but we will put that together and see how it turns out. So even though this morning I didn't get the conditions that I was really hoping for, I have still ended up with a couple of nice images. And that just goes to show that you can plan as much as you like with photography. You can check webcams to see how much snow is on the ground, to check what the larch trees or autumn colours are doing. You can check weather forecasts and look for fog and cloud coverage, but things will never go exactly to plan. So when it comes to photography, the main bit of advice I can give you in regards to planning shoots is no matter what, just go. Like I almost didn't come this morning. I was like, oh, there's not going to be much cloud in the sky. Maybe I'm not going to get the light I want. Maybe this snow will have melted more than I would have liked. And it has. But like I said, I've still got a couple of nice images. And if I hadn't gotten out of bed this morning, I wouldn't have got those. So at the end of the day, even if the conditions might not be what you think they are, you'll never know unless you go. And if you are planning to come and shoot here at Two Jack Lake or in the Banff and Lake Louise area, I have some fantastic location guides that you can download. The link is in the description below. It's a great way to support this channel and there are over 70 different locations and compositions in those guides and it will really help you make the most out of your photography if you are visiting the area. So be sure to check those out. But once again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you on the next one.